Hello, I'm uh, JT Russell here with uh, Coach Jeff Carr of the Knoxville Ice Bears uh, for kind of an end of the season uh, review and look to next season. Coach, how are you doing? Doing good. How are you doing? Uh, doing good. Wild times, but we're all kind of figuring it out as we go. Um, so looking at the end of the season with kind of the early cancellation, um, how was that time kind of around the Ice Bears and what did those kind of final few days look like for you? Well, it was, it sped up fast. I think the NBA was Tuesday or Wednesday night. I, it's somewhere midweek. And then uh, once we saw the NHL was going to play without fans, we kind of knew something was going to happen probably fairly quick. Um, and then it did. And then obviously the, with the ECHL and the NHL canceling, we kind of knew um, it was going to be, uh, was going to be us next. And it was, it was unfortunate because such a, I don't know, such a great year, not only from our organization, but so many bounce back organizations this year in our league and the league and parity was so strong that, uh, you know, but at the end of the day, this is everyone. It's, it's a lot more than just sports. So tough for our players for sure. And staff, but we're trying to make the best of it just like everyone. Perfect. Um, with the season kind of ending, we had, I think eight games left to go in the regular season uh, when the season had ended. What do you think those kind of final eight games would have looked like for you guys? What were you maybe looking for? Yeah, I mean, anything can happen in playoffs, but I think it was a great time that we stabilized our roster pretty much minus the call-ups the whole year. Um, I think we had 13-plus call-ups. So, you know, getting uh, Ryan Burr in from New England College or uh, University of New England or whatever with uh, the Florent brothers, um, Brady's brother was going to come in. You know, those guys, that would have been huge as a line of chemistry of, you know, basically three All-Americans. And um, I think Nielsen was starting to play a little bit more of a gritty game coming back from the ECHL. So the guys that got to put the puck in the net were, and then Cuthbert was playing his best hockey. And I felt like our defensive core finally identified of what they needed to do. And we we're going to inflict and inject some more scoring on the back end. Um, we weren't good scoring from the defensive side this year but we led the league in goals. So we knew that uh, a couple of those were going to have to be had for um, playoffs. And kind of early this year and really all year for the power play, it seemed like uh, I think you guys finished with the highest power play you had percentage wise in your tenure here. And then in the, by, and around January, you had one of the highest, like highest goal scoring offenses uh, the league's seen in about a decade. So what do you think was working really well with your, your offense this season? Oh, I think the the roles that guys took on, um, they were embracing the roles. You know, it, your net front guys were embracing the net front and their job. They weren't trying to be half wall guys. The half wall guys were shooting the puck and not trying to hit the seam every time unless it was there. And um, we never really had a point guy, which is crazy to think that you're leading the league or tied with 37 goals. But we never relied on one guy running, you know, a minute 20 power play like uh, the Capitals do and some other teams. So I thought it was just by committee and shooting the puck and guys not being selfish. And then when, you know, shooters or were set plays, uh, guys were being selfish in a good way. And um, taking the goalie's vision, we talk about it all the time and priding ourselves of net front and tips and everything like that. And I just thought that we finally bought into that. Um, and it happened soon this year. It was good to see. Um, so you were in the sixth spot when the, when the season ended, that would have, you know, put us in a matchup with Huntsville in the first round. Maybe what do you think that would have looked like? What were you kind of, you know, keying on for Huntsville? Not really, to be honest, just because it, I think if the points were four to 10 points away plus in that window and you start losing or winning games, you can see if you're retightening it up or if you're distancing yourself and I felt like for us we felt like a third fourth place hockey team in the standings all year never really checked the standings because I knew it was such a log jam in the middle that it was going to come down to those final two weeks and we had so much preparation that I think Huntsville won won the championship two years ago as a sixth seed uh you know things like that happen it's just I don't know. It wasn't about seedings. That it definitely wasn't. It was about getting our call ups back and putting the best product on the ice. And as you know, we we weren't really too scared of playing anyone. I think we would always rise up to our competition. So if we met uh, Fayetteville, if we met uh, Huntsville, if it's Peoria, it didn't matter. We were we were ready to go. 
you kind of talked about it, but uh, this year it seemed like, especially the top like six, but really everyone was dangerous. Can, can you kind of talk about maybe the parody that the league's kind of found? Yeah, I mean, there's there's some good coaches like Jeff Best did. He did a great job in Evansville and turning that organization back where it probably should be. They got a great building. Um, their fan support's coming back. They got great amenities and, and resources for their team. Uh, Pensacola was strong as always, just keeping the puck out of the net. Peoria had a good year again. And then Fayetteville, Jesse did a hell of a job over there. One of the one of the best jobs I've seen in a long time. They just kept coming, and, and it wasn't that they just win shootouts who's low-scoring low games. So everyone in the league was good. And then obviously with us leading the league in the best power play and probably on paper for, for the roster going into the playoffs, we would have been um, – we would have had a good squad. But that's in the past now, obviously. Um, you know, all we can do is start building for next year. So looking to next year, um, I know it's kind of early, but do you kind of have a thought of what the returnees may look like? Yeah, we went through everything. We got guys out of the apartments and had those talks with guys. Um, I had to emphasize two different factors. Number one, you know, making sure they're safe and, you know, it could last months. It could last weeks. We, I don't know. We're not going to be in the business of knowing what's going to happen with the world. But for your hockey career, are you going to have a plan to play or not? And do you want to be back in Knoxville? Because if there is... Um, we need to know right now because there's not going to be many jobs opening up. That's for sure. Uh, we recruit obviously year round and, um, we got a lot of good ties of guys that want to be here. And then on top of that, you know, if, uh, these European borders and things are happening like this, I don't foresee a lot of families wanting players, um, or their sons to go head over or wives or girlfriends or whatever the case go across the European borders next year. So I, I personally think that our league and uh, up through minor hockey is going to be loaded next year with talent. So, you know, we, we located 16 to 17 guys. There's one guy possible on a job situation that want to be back. And on a 19 man roster, you can do the math. And then we would have had a, our call ups back. So if they don't make it plus our recruits right now, that at the end of the year, um, it'll be tough to be on our team, but that's, that's good. It's good for us. Uh, and you kind of talked about it, but with the season ending so early, does it kind of give you a better jump into maybe recruiting, kind of dive in a little harder than you were expecting? I think everyone's on the same page there. I think that so many guys have good buddies that, you know, are playing, but I felt like two, three years ago or when I came in and got hired, I was starting from a clean slate. I didn't know how many returners I'd call uh, the entire roster to see. And I didn't know if I was going to get three back or 13, but I knew it was going to be a pretty – fairly low number so for us not having as high as number it's all about the puzzle pieces and just knowing what they want and where to go and some guys are in that like the Cuthro Bricado Bombardier you know do you guys want to get called up or um, do you want to try to win a championship and those guys were on board some some of the younger guys are still wanting to get called up rightfully so um, but uh, at the end of the day it's going to be tough to make our team because of uh, the, the just two, three pieces we got to pick up on the back end and at the center position. And then just finally, I guess, what can you say fans can look forward to for next year? Kind of expect from uh, the fourth season of you as head coach and what that team can look like? Well, a couple things. I think that what we did is we've located in, in the tenure here, whether we've achieved it or not, um, when we've not had a team tough, uh, group of guys we're on the phones we're doing everything we can to make sure that that's the number one priority that we're not going to get pushed around especially not in our barn um, and and obviously the offensive side of things and like that but I think the stability at the goaltending position uh, is my number one thing uh, the, the quality quality teams don't have goalies getting called up all the time you see Levine you see Milosek you see those guys um, so whoever's going to fill our net, we want to be here and we want to log in a ton of games. Uh, our back end, we'd like to have a little bit more scoring. Uh, we had that ton of that with even the Chen and the New Golds and the Flagels and even Granth chipping in in some overtime games in the last two years. We need more offense from our back end. Uh, and, you know, we just we need a little bit more grit and toughness on our second line. Our, our, uh, our line combos were good and guys were great at, you know, with all the call-ups, whether you're playing with 17 or you got an extra body in there or whatever the case is, but we we had we did not have a second line this year that we could count on 
from playing that gritty style of game. So we want to build our top three, um, being dynamic. We want some scoring on our second line, but some toughness. And then we want our third line just to go to work, especially when we go on the road. Perfect. Well, I really appreciate your time. I hope things continue to go well, and hopefully it's a good offseason. Awesome. Thanks. Appreciate it, JT. Absolutely. Thank you.